Now we've yeah. got a we've got a classic thing to talk about, Niall and I here. This is a report I just saw this afternoon. It's absolutely unbelievable, unbelievable. So the headline is uh, Glasgow set to become the UK's first feminist city. So on October the twenty seventh, Glasgow City Council voted unan unanimously. So in other words, translation, including the Conservatives. Maybe, they might have abstained, but in any case, no, they didn't vote against it. Back to motion stating that women should be at the heart of all aspects of city planning, becoming the first city in the UK to embrace feminist urbanism. <laughs> uh, this is serious. Yeah, this is serious. Right. Feminist urbanism advocates for a type of urban planning that promotes inclusivity and puts the needs of women, non-binary and gender fluid people at the forefront of the way we think of the urban landscape, because perhaps unsurprisingly, our cities are far from being gender neutral. So what, what features would you like on the streets of Glasgow to make them more uh, inclusive of gender fluid people? Oh, well, they, uh, uh, I, have to, I, I don't know what they're even, what, what could be even construed as a gender neutral sort of uh, installation? I don't know. How are we going to make the streets more um, uh, more feminist? It's just that it, it's farcical well, in, well, in the extreme, Richard. It really is. When I read the article, the bit that stood out against me, or, or it made me laugh rather, um, you know, it was urban or fe uh, you know urban feminist planners, uh, their scholars uh, argue, you know, feminist urbanist scholars. What is this? Uh, it's all hogwash. It's all ridiculous. And Nicola Sturgeon keeps painting this, uh, you know, what is this gender neutral plan? What is well, this? Let, let, is let, it let, more transgenderism, obviously? Let, let's, let's read on. The cities we inhabit and the spaces within them are experienced in different ways by all of us, with factors like gender identity, background, ethnicity and age playing an important role in the way we move across the urban landscape. A straight white man, a gay black teen, or a middle-class 80-year-old woman with a disability will all experience the city in different ways. It's just now, sickening, I, sickening to hear you say that. Absolutely I, sickening. I mean, I, I, I'm a, a, a white, uh, sort of English immigrant, if you like. <laughs> so I must experience the streets one way. And, and, and Niall, you, you must experience them in a yeah, different way. A different way, absolutely. I mean... Um, we must be walking down completely different streets, Richard. Uh, yeah. It's it's insane uh, that well, one it's it's obviously it's it looks to me like a route to the labels, you know, uh, a straight white male, uh, a black gay teen, uh, all these labels. We're just human beings, guys. We all experience uh -huh. the same things. So yeah. if we can get away from the labels, we can get away from all this uh, niche bu boutique installations for each individual identity it's we need to come closer back to just we're all human beings rather than yeah. i'm this that and other and stop I mean, you know just don't wait what you want in the streets you want some maybe a chair here and there to have a sit down and you want to be clean. i think everyone would like it to be clean I think that would be uh, well that's that's weird. the main thing uh if it was clean, we'd maybe not have the need for all these gender neutral uh, installations. Uh, yeah, I'm that, still puzzled as to how they're going to. I mean, what is the actual plan? Is is there more uh, in well, this? We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get, <laughs> I, I asked my wife about it. She said, "What it will mean is they'll put a load of posters up." <laughs> this is probably about right. But let's read on though. And don't forget, as I'm reading this, conservatives. We're assuming they voted for it. They certainly didn't vote against it. So, right. So Glasgow Council notes a gender neutral approach to city development does not work. So all the cities that have ever been built through the whole of human history it hasn't worked because they haven't been feminist planned. Because people have marginalized genders and diverse needs that are not currently reflected in practice. And that's an intersectional, inclusive and climate friendly approach is needed, said Glasgow Green Councillor Holly Bruce who pushed forward the groundbreaking motion in the Scottish city. 
I mean, the Greens, I, I said, that's Scottish politics for you, is it? The Greens lead yeah. the way and the others trot on behind. That maybe they don't quite keep up, but they do their best yeah. to keep up. And this report, it's all that straight-faced as if this is just perfectly normal, good thing to do. No, no, no suggestion this might be controversial in any way. Um, I mean, it's fundamental that women are central to all aspects of planning, public realm design, policy development, and budget. All right, this is the important bit. What does a feminist city look like? Mm -hmm. So, uh, a feminist city is one in which the needs of all people living in it are met. Well, that just sounds like any old city to me. Not only those of white, cis, able-bodied men. So every why, city... Why, why, why is it white, right? So why is white included in that? Well, obviously, I bet when you, you can't find any reason whatsoever. Benches, if it's gender neutrality, it's got nothing to do with race. And yet yeah. it's crowbarred in there. Yeah, yeah. In concrete terms, that means building a city where everyone's included but not limited to women, feels equally safe and empowered and where every group has the same access to services. I mean, it's it's just, <sighs> just too bizarre. Right, according to Holly's motion, the main features of the gender equal city include walkability, proximity to services, safe public spaces and open green spaces. Right, do men not want open green spaces? Now, now I, I can imagine, okay, that there, there might be a place to be made the women feel a bit more vulnerable walking around at night. So, the, the, um, mm -hmm. fair, fine. We do bear in mind, of course, there are more violent attacks against men than women. But yeah, I can understand that for women. They might be worried. And so if a town planner wants to say, okay, let's just bear in mind, women might be uncomfortable walking through this park. So let's put some extra lights in and, and mm -hmm. this, or, or let's put the path closer to the road. Fine, fine. But you have to de declare the whole thing a feminist city to do that. Yeah. Uh, no, it just it, it goes back for me as well. I mean, where's all the money coming to pay for all this? Well, just you know, demolish all the buildings and rebuild in the gender neutral way. And yet, we've not got money to do this, that, or the other. We've not got money to do this, but we've got yeah, we've got money to pledge towards climate causes and money to pledge towards gender neutrality causes. It's yeah, um, it's almost laughing in our face when we've got these tangible problems. Uh, affecting everyday people's lives and yet these people are more interested in uh, ideological pr solutions yeah. to a problem that doesn't exist yeah but the, the way i say it is playtime i want to say to them playtime's over mm -hmm. you know we've run out of money they're cutting 400 million from the nhs budget so playtime's over there isn't money to play i mean these these should be like ridiculous discussions it's, in some yeah. university seminar room they shouldn't actually yeah. escape into the real world and have taxpayers' money spent on them. But, yeah, but as far as they're concerned, playtime's carrying on. Like the reality of the, the UK, the Scottish, the world situation, just uh, not interested. No. Not interested. Uh, oh. Okay, let's get some more. Uh, I could say that I would really like wider pavements and more streetlights. And I'm a white, cis, able bodied woman, so I don't know what everyone else needs. Mm. Well, you, you know, I see a, a person that is describing themselves as a white, cis, able-bodied female is uh -huh. clearly part of the problem. Yeah. Uh, and obviously they've interviewed someone who's part of the problem <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to sort of cement their, uh, their article. It makes no sense. Um, we need to come away from the labels. Like I said, we can't just uh, pocket people and divide them into cis, heterosexual, homosexual, pansexual, or sapio, whatever it is, and then divide them even further. We're just yeah. human beings, folks. Uh, I really do, I, this, yeah. Every discussion about the label really does irritate me, actually. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a division tactic. Plain yeah, it's, a po it's a power struggle mentality. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we as women... We're in a power struggle against men. Men have got the power, so they must have designed the city to suit men. So we need to strike back and fight against it. So we exert our authority and get the city um, designed to suit us. So the battle's on. But it's a non-existent battle. No man has ever said, ha, 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 let's design the city to suit us. Stuff those women. It's and even if they did fantasy. that, Richard, even if there was a, a group of men sat around the table saying, we are going to design this city, with male interest at heart. 
no uh -huh. females' interests will be taken here. And what were the, what would they do exactly in order to accomplish that? It makes no sense. Yeah. There's one thing it says here um, about provision for uh, parents with prams. I mean, how sexist can you get? I mean, if I said something where I assumed, it, if I said, you know, it, it's mums with push chairs we need to make space for, they'd say it's not just mums. You can't say it's mums. That's sexist. Yeah. Mums and dads have push chairs. But they say making space for prams is part of the feminist, uh, the, the feminist yeah. plan. I mean, in my pram pushing days, I mean, when there's provision for prams and wheelchairs, yeah, it's very helpful. I quite appreciated that. But why that has to be part of a, a feminist city? But that, the last thing I say about this, you know, what makes Glasgow a feminist city? I mean, another thing way that feminisms hit Glasgow is that Glasgow lost over one third of its annual budget a couple of years ago to the equal pay claim. Mm -hmm. So it lost about the amount of its entire education budget in one go. So they've had to sell lots of leisure facilities. They've had to sell museum buildings. So that's one of the reasons why Glasgow finances, council finances are an absolute mess. And just a quick recap on the story. Years ago, uh, some women went along to Glasgow council and thought, oh, I'd like a job. And they looked at all the jobs available. And they could have been a grave digger, got paid a bit more money, but it's cold and wet. Um, or you could be, say, a school cleaner. Don't get paid quite as so much money, but you're in the dry and you know maybe a bit more comfortable in the winter. And generally, the women chose to be uh, the, uh, the the school cleaners, and generally, the men chose to be the grave diggers. For example, then they do the job for thirty or forty years, and then say they've been discriminated against because they didn't get paid as much as the people who did the job that they chose not to do. Mm. And then Glasgow City Council say it had to pay out over half a billion pounds which is more than a third of its annual budget a few years ago um so, so its finances are an, an absolute mess but d does reality bite does playtime over no they're still still playing at this it's, uh yeah couldn't believe it right how it's we always playtime at glasgow city council it seems Richard. Uh -huh. it's always playtime yep uh Right, we've got a comment here. <laughs> the pavements are sexist. You can't walk with small feet and high heels, and I'm a man. <laughs> okay. Thanks for that perspective. It'd be helpful to know what, uh, uh, more about your, your, your sort of race and, and other things as well, for us mm -hmm. to really be able to position that comment. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, okay. it's, um there is a, a lurch towards labelling everyone, and you'll see it yourself, you'll see it um, yeah. over the last three years, um, and you maybe even found yourself uh, doing it yourself, um, in which case, try and pull yourself back, uh, don't um, don't label yourself like that, and don't allow other people to label you like that either, uh -huh. um, more to the point. Yeah, yeah. I think that I mean, the big picture of this power struggle mentality, I feel you could summarize it as society is so bad because there's, there's some people in power and they're oppressing the rest of us. So we need to rise up and, and, and you know, it's basically called a revolution, ultimately, isn't it? Or, or more and more government intervention. And the other thing is, instead of thinking, you know, we're, we're British or we're Scottish or whatever, so, so that's our, our loyalty on the world stage. Instead of that, it becomes like international. We're the united oppressed women of the world. Um, again, so extreme left-wing politics goes, mm -hmm. tends to be very internationalist. So that's what's, uh, that's what's happening there. 